Hello guys, this is Rupesh and I'm watching CBNet's video series on C++ and today's topic is how to initialize base class data members from derived class constructor. Actually, this is not a very big topic, but lately so many people were asking me, so I thought, okay, let's go ahead and create the video for this. And if you're a really beginner, you don't know this. So it's really cool if you understand how the calling work. So the points are, actually there is only one point. So the default constructor of base class is called automatically. So if you have a base class default constructor and you are just simply creating a derived class object, then the default constructor of base class is called automatically. We don't have to call it. Okay. Actually you can call, but it doesn't make any sense. Compiler will do that job for you. But if you want to call parameterized constructor of base, then we have to call it explicitly. And this is what we'll see in this video. And the actual part is how to call that. You cannot call it as a function. So let's start the coding now. For that we need base class and derived class. Let me create that. We have class base and we have class derived. And you have derived this publicly. So base is derived into derived class. And let's create a default constructor which will have base and one parameterized constructor. We can have integer x that x can be initialized with x because we have integer x here. This is a traditional example. Let's not go into much deeper. And now this is the time to create derived class constructors. So we have this default one and let's create y comma integer x. And here goes the magic. Now notice this carefully. This is the syntax of calling your base class constructor. So you'll be writing base and pass x from here. So this is the syntax. So whenever you will have object like this, derive d and we have one and two, and you want to initialize this one inside your derived class y integer y, and you want to copy this two inside x. So you have to call your base class constructor like this. And if you are creating a derived class like D1 and that's it, you're not passing anything in that. In that case, it will call this one and compiler will help you in that case and it will call this base class constructor. So this is like an automatic, you can write this. So you can actually make this explicit call, but you don't have to do this. Compiler will do this for you. But if you want to initialize this X, you have to explicitly write it. Okay. So let's give some message so that we can see how is it working. And down we will have parameterized constructor. And similarly, we will have C out. And here we will have derived parameterize. And there is a way of calling actually, the order is like this. See, you're creating the object. So it will call the constructor. So as you're passing the parameters one and two, so it will call this constructor, not this constructor. Okay. And before executing this constructor, I mean, before going inside, like printing this and all, it will call this base constructor. Okay. So it will not go inside and do the stuff. Okay. I just forgot to initialize Y here. Okay. So this is how it would be. So yeah, I was telling that it will call derived first because of this. And then before executing derived, it will call this base class constructor. It will initialize this X first, then it will come back and initialize Y and execute this. Okay. So I can show you that. Let's compile this. Okay. We got some error here. What is that? Okay. I just forgot to do this. So compile again. Okay, so this base class parameterize constructor derived class parameterize constructor. So this is calling base class parameterize constructor first. As I said, it will not execute this one first. It will go and execute this one first and then come back and execute this. Okay. And similarly, if you're calling this default constructor, because you're not passing anything inside this D1, then it will end up calling this derived. And again, this is not going to execute itself. 
first it will call base class default constructor that's why you're getting this base default before this derived default and as i said you don't need this so let's get rid of this and save and compile see it is giving you the same output so that thing is totally optional it's up to you if you want to write it write it otherwise just leave that compiler will take care of that so the main thing was this particular syntax you should write this column and then base class constructor name and whatever the parameter you want to pass okay it should be like this only you should not call this base let me just do this from here okay it won't work okay so let me just undo this and it really makes sense that if you want to initialize base class data member then you have to call base class constructors you cannot initialize this x inside derived and you know what you may say that let's suppose this integer x is uh, a public so let me just do that we have this as public in that case this x is visible here okay so this derived can see this x inside itself now you can do this let me just remove this and we have just initialized y here and here you can initialize this x is equal to x so why this x because this x and this x both are equal so there is no way to distinguish it so i am using this pointer here so that we can point to this x and this particular x is this one so we can do this but this is not good idea for that you have to keep this as public and protected because if this is protected this class can access this protected data members okay so you should be knowing what is public private and protected access specifiers in inheritance but that's not the point the point is you should not do things like this if you are initializing your base data member you should initialize it through base class constructors only because there is a problem here the problem is actually i have compiled the code here you can see that in both the cases this is calling base default and this is also base default so here also we ended up calling base default so anyway you are calling only okay you can see that but you are not initializing there you explicitly initialized here and generally we don't keep these data members public we keep them mostly the private data members so there is no way to do this okay if you will compile this you'll get the error see we got the error saying that x is a private member of base so we cannot access it here okay so the correct way of doing this is this only colon call the base class constructor with the parameter and you are done okay so i think we are done and if i left some point please comment it will be helpful for others as well and if you like the video don't forget to hit the like button dude it would help me a lot and make sure you subscribe to my channel so that you can get the notification for upcoming videos like this i'll see you in the next videos bye bye